Good morning, Rejoice family. My name is Lori, and I am Bob and Charlene's middle child and only daughter. And I wanted to give you a video Charlene cares today so for something different. Um, in the recent days, our attention has been drawn to the events that took place a few days ago in Boston with the terrible bombings. And if you are um, listening to this and you are in another country, you probably have even heard about it where you are. But recently there was a tragic bombing in Boston and several people lost their lives and many people were injured. And I would just encourage you to continue to be in prayer for that community and for the families that have lost loved ones. Um, in watching the news recently, I was drawn to the attention that they were giving the marathon runners. And I had been aware of the Boston Marathon, but I'd never realized how many thousands of people run it. I believe this particular day, there was 23,000 people running in this marathon. And it made me think about the day that my son, Kyle, who is my oldest child, he is one of the twins, um, decided that he wanted to run cross country for school. He was entering his sixth grade year and he had never been a runner. Kyle is shaped like a football player and built like a football player. And he decided that he wanted to try his hand at running. And so he literally went from the couch to running three miles in one day. And in the beginning, he was sore and he was tired and his muscles ached. But as he trained and progressed, he got more accustomed to running and it didn't hurt so much and he didn't get quite as winded. And we could see that he was progressing. The time came for Kyle to run his first cross country race. And so we, like many of the other parents, lined up along the side of the race and um, went to watch him and cheer him on. And as we were there, we saw the racers coming through and we would cheer for them. And then the middle of the pack racers would come through and we didn't see Kyle coming through. And so we waited and waited. And finally we saw the golf cart coming up over the hill and in front of the golf cart was Kyle. And many of you probably know, but when you're running a race, the golf cart is at the back of the pack to pick up people that can no longer finish the race and they can help them get to the finish line on the golf cart. So I was so proud to see Kyle, although at the very back of the, the pack, he was in front of the golf cart and not actually riding on the golf cart. And um, with the recent discussions about the race and about marathoners, it made me think about what the Bible has to say about racing. So I wanted to share some scriptures with you. The first one I'm going to share is from Hebrews and it's chapter 12, verse 1. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Are you running a race that's mapped out before you? I know that what you're going through right now might not be the race that you thought it was going to be. And you might be in the midst of running a, a uh, battle, basically, that you didn't know you were going to go through. But the Lord has assured us that he is with us and he will carry us through. Let me read another scripture to you in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24. It begins, Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like a man running aimlessly. I do not fight like a man beating the air. No, I beat my body and make it my slave, so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. And those are such powerful words. It made me think back to Kyle's race. And when he finished the race last, that first race, many of the runners from his team that had already completed the race went back onto the course to either cheer on the runners that were still coming or to stand on the sidelines and cheer for them. And what you're going through is much like that. There may be times in your stand where you are running that race and you feel like I cannot go on another minute. I've never run a 5K, but Kyle told me 
that in the midst of it, there's areas on the course where you see a lot of fans and parents and other students cheering. And there's areas on the course where you are just running and it's just yourself and the training that you've done. And the same goes for your stand. There's gonna be many times in your stand where you feel like it's just you and God and nobody else. And that's okay. That's when the training that you have done for the journey that you're on is gonna come in. This is part of the training, God's Word. Part of the training is your time alone with Him and your prayer time, listening to Him and allowing the Lord to speak to you. And there's going to be times on this course that you're going to feel that you have people cheering you on and saying, you can do it. Let's go. Well done, good and faithful servant. And those are going to be your prayer partners, your relatives, maybe your in-laws, and us at Rejoice Marriage Ministries. And we want to help you get through this and cheer you on and say, you can stand. You can do this. God does heal and restore hurting marriages. And I just want to encourage you today, as I thought about that um, and thought about Kyle, it just made me think of the um, relationship between the two. Now, let me tell you that as Kyle progressed in his running, he went from being at the back of the pack to being in the middle of the pack and to moving up in his time. And he would, um, the first race that took maybe 50 minutes to finish, which is a long time for a 5K, he would cut down and finish it in under 20 minutes or 22 minutes. And as he would be finishing and there would be other people on the course, he became one that had trained and could finish faster and was now able to go out and help others and cheer them on. And you're going to find the same is going to happen in your stand. You're going to have days and seasons where you were the one running the race and you are exhausted and you need the encouragement and the accolades and the praise from other people, from a prayer partner, from God's word, from the Charlene Cares devotionals. And then you're gonna find there's a point in your stand where you're gonna be the one on the sidelines, that you've matured in your walk and in your Christian faith, and you're gonna be the one coming alongside a person saying, you can do this. God does heal hurting marriages. Keep going. The finish line is coming. And I just wanna encourage you today to seek out other people that are walking this journey alone. In Bible study recently, I shared that as a parent with a child who's sick, I can scope out other people with sick kids instantly. And I remember my dad would say he could do that also with divorced people. We would be in a restaurant and he would see a father with no wedding ring on, sitting alone on a Wednesday night with two children. And he would say, I bet it's his visitation night. And I would just encourage you, be bold about your statement for your stand. Don't be ashamed of what God's doing in your life. And you can maybe right now come alongside somebody else who's on that course and they need encouragement and you could be the encourager. And then there may be a time where that person's gonna come on to the side of you and encourage you as well. So just be encouraged today with that. And um, let me pray for us as we close right now. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for everything that you have blessed us with. Even in the midst of our deep, dark valleys, Lord, we have so much to be grateful for. And Father, I would first like to pray for the people in Boston, what they are going through and the tragedies that they have been um, witness to recently. Lord, I just know that you know every situation. You know the person responsible for this. And Lord, I pray that you would just give direction to the police and the FBI as they investigate this and help them be able to um, figure out this crime and bring the person that has done this to justice. Lord, I pray that your comforting hand would be on the people that are injured and that are facing new realities this week as they um, adjust to illnesses and disabilities that they might have for the rest of their lives. Lord, may somebody come alongside these families that knows you and your saving, healing, redeeming power and can witness to these families about the goodness of God. Father, I also pray for each man and woman that's watching this right now. And some are in the midst of a restoration and their marriage is better than it has ever been. And they are the people that are on the sidelines cheering and helping those along that are not so far along. And there's others, Lord, who are right in the midst of the worst scenario they have faced in their lives and they are in the midst of trial they are alone on that running course and it's just you and them 
And God, they feel like they can't finish the race. They may feel like the finish line is so far off that they don't know how they're going to get there. But Lord, I just pray you would send an encouraging word to that person today to let them know they can do it. And Lord, there can be times where they climb hills in this valley and that they see victories and that they can count on you. You have not abandoned them. And Lord, I just pray that they would be reminded of that today. Thank you for the blessings that you have given us. Thank you for your salvation and the gift that you've given us of salvation. And Lord, I pray that you would just be with each one of us as we go um, to different ways and different countries and different cities and states today. Help us be a witness for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I also want to encourage you that if you are watching Charlene Cares, you know that this summer we are taking Rejoice on the Road. And basically what that is, is it is a Bible study that is going to be live in a couple different cities. We're going to Dallas, Texas, the end of May, and then in July we'll be going to Cincinnati. So space is limited. I would encourage you to check Charlene Cares and sign up. We would love to have you join us. I know you will be blessed um, by my mom's teachings. In Dallas, we have a couple joining us that has a restored marriage and they will be giving a testimony to that and you will be blessed and encouraged by their testimony. So um, I would encourage you to look that up and check it out and I hope you have a wonderful day.